Good evening and welcome to this uh, Prepare for Canada webinar. For those of you who have participated in our, any of our previous webinars, I'd like to welcome you back. And I know that some of you have participated. I believe I noticed that Samir is here. And for our panelists, I just wanted to bring to your attention that uh, Samir uh, participated in our last week's conference, uh, webinar, working webinar. He's an architect and he's got some construction project management experience. He was in our working webinar and he asked us of the two provinces he's considering, Ontario or British Columbia, which would be better for him given his qualifications. So we told him to uh, register for this webinar because it's a great opportunity to speak with some experts from BC and, and uh, he can be able to ask some questions and, and make an informed decision. So Samir, welcome to you. Welcome to, back to all of you who are returning. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we'd like to welcome you. All of us here at Prepare for Canada are committed to helping you and thousands of newcomers just like you as you prepare for your journey to Canada. We do this through webinars just like today's, offering up subject matter experts who are able to answer your questions around taking your financial first steps, renting your first home, or working in Canada. We also offer over 20 different career pathway books that are downloadable and give you a six-step approach to researching over 20 different professions or trades. Uh, we also offer webinars on demand and video on demand. All of our offers are free of charge for you and uh, we make them available through the generous sponsorship of our major sponsor, Scotiabank, and through our partners. Today's webinar is brought to you by the British Columbia Construction Association. We'll be talking about a great program, the Integrating Newcomers Program. This is a wonderful opportunity for qualified newcomers who are looking for employment opportunities in the British Columbia Construction Association. And our guests today from the British Columbia Construction Association are Abigail Fulton, who is the Vice President of the Association and is in charge of their initiative to bring foreign trained workers to and qualified trades people to BC. Along with Abigail are Kim Kravatin, who Kim provides immigration assistance to newcomers, and Matthew Stevenson is the trades assessor. As I've said, my name is Dave Frattini, and along with us is our, uh, my business partner, Nick Durrani. Abigail, before I turn the presentation over to you, I want to let our audience know as well that along with us is our as Ryan D'Souza from Prepare for Canada, who is acting as our moderator and technical troubleshooter. So if you're having any technical difficulties, uh, please send a chat note to, uh, to Ryan and he should be able to assist you. Also, please take advantage of having Abigail, Kim, and Matthew here by asking questions. You can ask your questions at the bottom right hand of the screen. We've devoted uh, about 35 minutes to the question and answer period uh, right after Abigail's short presentation. Uh, so please don't be shy about asking your questions. This is a great opportunity for you. And with that, I'd like to welcome Abigail, Matthew, and Kim. And Abigail, I'm sure people are really interested and excited to hear what you have to say, so I'm going to turn it right over to you. Thank you very much, David. I'm very pleased to be here today, and I'm, I can speak for my colleagues, Kim and Matthew. Um, we're excited to, to be able to present this information and we hope that it's very useful for you and that you get in touch with us um, even after the presentation. Uh, we're happy to hear from you and to provide assistance to any newcomers that are considering coming to British Columbia. So first of all, I'd like to give you a little explanation of who the BC Construction Association is. Um, we're an employer-based organization we represent about 2,000 employers active in the industrial, commercial, and institutional and multifamily residential sector of the construction industry. Um, having said that, we also have many members who do 
uh, who are involved in road building, involved in single family home construction, um, but our main focus is on ICI construction. We're on the west coast of Canada, you'll see by the map on the screen, um, we're next to the uh, Pacific Ocean. Um, we have four, we're an umbrella organization. We represent four regional associations that are listed there on the screen. And when you put all of us together, we basically cover the entire province of British Columbia. We're in the north uh, with our Prince George Association. We're on the island with Vancouver Island Construction Association. In the lower mainland, which in includes Vancouver with the Vancouver Regional Construction Association and in the Southern Interior uh, with the Southern Interior Construction Association. Um, we ha oh, don't get ahead of me here. Okay. I'm still talking. <laughs> no problem. I'll let you know when I want to switch okay, slides. Perfect. <laughs> so uh, before we go to the next slide, I just want to clarify who our members are. Um, we represent the industry, but our members uh, include general contractors, trade contractors, uh, they include manufacturers, uh, suppliers, and all the associated um, sectors that feed into the construction industry, which is a very large industry in British Columbia. Next slide, please. So, well, I say we have many members, and they come from all uh, parts of the industry. Primarily, they are small companies. So 85% of all the employers and, and construction companies in British Columbia have fewer than 10 employees. Um, it seems hard to believe, considering the large projects that are undertaken by these companies, but that's the way the construction industry works. And I, I, I want to make that point, um, because you may wonder why, as an employer association, we're involved in looking for workers and, and helping them get jobs. We recognized about 10 years ago um, that because our companies and our employers are small, they don't have HR departments and they need help, especially in times uh, where there are skill shortages. The typical recruitment uh, plan for a small company is to hire uh, a family member, hire a friend, um, go to the local school, or possibly uh, poach the employer or employee from down the street. And while that might work in times when there's high uh, unemployment, when there's a lot of demand, it doesn't work well. So we got involved about 10 years ago, and we have a number of programs, and we have infrastructure set up across the province um, that, that connects people looking for work with the job opportunities that are out there. And typically over the last decade, we've focused on Canadians, we focused on underutilized groups like our uh, Aboriginal population, women, not a high number of women in the industry here, uh, and immigrants. So we have quite a bit of experience helping immigrants who are already in BC. But we've discovered in the last few years that we don't even have enough of those. So we started looking offshore. Um, we have a, a program called Foreign Skilled Workers that, have, uh, that has recruited offshore looking for skilled workers and has worked with employers to connect the two and, and to step in and assist uh, with the immigration process. Now that program, the Foreign Skilled Worker Program, is funded entirely by employers uh, and it's based on absolute uh, contracts. So an employer who wants to contract with somebody offshore, then we get involved. Um, next slide, please. So there is work, and there is work available in every region of British Columbia, a lot of demand. Currently, there's about $81 billion worth of construction underway, and there's another $300 billion on the books in the next few years anticipated, uh, and that's a lot of construction work, and it's focused in a number of different areas. A lot of the major pro projects, such as LNG plants and mines, hydroelectric plants and so forth that are under construction or soon to be under construction are happening in northern BC and you'll see on the slide where that where that is. Now we're talking northern a northern area of Canada so we're talking cold weather. Um, you, you know anybody working in those uh, regions are going to be fairly remote. Uh, there'll be special camps set up to, to have uh, living accommodations. 
Uh, and generally, uh, if you get jobs in those areas, it's quite high paying. It's industrial work. And often you'd be flown in and flown out. And the lower mainland is the area where you'll find Vancouver. It's that most populated part of British Columbia. The climate is quite mild. Um, and there's construction going on all year round. Uh, it's your typical urban setting. You'll have high-rise development, commercial, some institutional. Um, and often it's quite busy and a lot of immigrants first come to that area. So, you know, our experience in helping immigrants get jobs um, is quite often focused in, in the lower mainland area. It is, however, also a very exp expensive place to live and we can talk about those challenges if anybody's interested in that. Vancouver Island, which is where we are situated, um, a very pleasant climate. It's quite a large island, probably about the size of Ireland. Um, a lot of work, uh, and it's, it's very diversified. There'll be some institutional, there'll be some industrial, some commercial, and some residential, including single-family homes. And the same will be found in the southern interior, which is, again, a little cooler in the winter, but a little hotter in the summer. Um, a real uh, uh, hot spot for a lot of uh, vacationers. There's a wine district in there. It's a, it's a beautiful part of the province. But again, um, not as populated, uh, but quite uh, uh, diversified. Next slide. So a lot of work, a lot of demand, um, and there are a lot of challenges finding people to meet the demand. Um, in, in British Columbia, the general uh, workforce within the construction industry totals about 215,000. Based on the work that's coming up, we need to find an additional 45,000 people to fill jobs, not just because of demand, but because of people who are retiring. Two out of three uh, skilled workers in, in the construction industry are over the age of 45. Uh, and uh, any of you who are familiar with working, particularly on the tools, uh, retirement comes early for, for many skilled workers. So, in addition to all the demand and the opportunity that's coming down the pipe, um, we also have a demographic challenge in that the baby boomers are retiring. So even so, we need all we know. We're going to have all these job openings in addition to what's available now. Um, the challenge is where are we going to find them? Even after we tap all our current resources, um, there's still going to be shortages from 15 to 30,000. Uh, shortages that we're going to have to get from somewhere else. So lots of opportunity. Um, you can see by the slide uh, we've listed some of the opportunities that are available. This is not inclusive of all of them. Uh, under In the trades we're, we're always looking for carpenters, concrete fish, finishers, crane operators, industrial electricians, pipe fitters. Um, there, there are many more. There's uh, And Matthew can speak to this later if anybody has uh, specific questions around that, um, but many, many, many openings for skilled trades. Uh, in addition, the technicians, the professionals, whether you're engineers, uh, estimators, project managers, um, there are openings for all of them, even architects, um, although those kinds of jobs are more challenging because generally the job openings are specific, so your background and what projects you've worked on is particularly important to get to getting that job in British Columbia, but there's also support occupations, you know, whether it's warehousing, uh, equipment operators, truck drivers, security guards, accountants, lawyers, uh, you name it. Our industry is huge and when we help people get jobs, we're, we're looking not just for uh, the folks on the tools, but the, but the administrative help in the offices and, and, and uh, in the suppliers and, and manufacturing positions that, that mm -hmm. supply the construction industry. Uh, next slide, please. And while we're going to the next slide, I'd still like to remind everyone, please make sure you're submitting your questions. We're getting lots of them in, but I want to keep uh, reminding people to do just that. Abigail, back to you. So that's a, a, a very brief overview of the labor market information uh, and the demand opportunities in British Columbia. Um, what I want to get to next is to talk about this new program that we started operating uh, last fall called Integrating Newcomers. And this is a program that is, is running in tandem and in addition to, to our other programs. 
it's focused, it's funded by the Government of Canada. It's, uh, again, industry specific. It's, it's focused on the construction industry uh, on the broader scale. Um, and it's a program that is focused on pre-arrival and providing information assessments and hopefully attachment with employment for those folks who are headed to Canada. We work with many partners and other service providers also funded by the Government of Canada, both onshore and offshore. Uh, and we're also conducting research in uh, the world in, in a number of, of areas where we're seeing immigrants coming in to inform us and to be able to inform people coming to Canada um, with regards to how their skill sets match up to, to skill standards and requirements in Canada. Next slide, please. So our new program, uh, Integrating uh, Newcomers, uh, I'll give you a really quick overview and then I'll get into it in more, in more detail. Um, it, the program starts off uh, by you or somebody interested in the program submitting an application online on our website. Um, we take a look at that application and we determine whether you're eligible for the program. I'll get to eligibility in a second. Um, if you are eligible, um, we refer you to Matthew Stevenson, who you see on the panel, who does an in-depth assessment looking at your background, your skill sets, your education, and determines where you're best suited to find employment in the industry. Following that, we we're waiting for the next important... <laughs> yes, there we go. Thank you very much. Um, uh, once we understand where you best fit, we connect you with somebody on the ground in British Columbia called an employment uh, placement specialist, a regional employment placement specialist. We refer to them as reps. And they will work with you one-on-one -on -one to determine your best uh, route forward to get employment, to get settled in British Columbia. And finally, when you actually arrive in British Columbia, um, the reps will uh, work with you to uh, assist your transition into the workplace in BC. Next slide, please. So I want to look into this a little, a little more carefully. If you could just go back one slide. Um, uh, it's, well, I want to be clear who's eligible for this particular program. Um, you need to either be a permanent resident of Canada or you've been selected to become a permanent resident. So you're, so you're en route pending completion of your medicals and so forth. Um, or you're a refugee. Um, so if you're not one of those, you may be eligible for one of our other programs, which you can certainly uh, take a look on our website to, to go over. But for now, you need to be one of those uh, folks in order to be eligible for this program. Next, next slide, please. So again, step one, please go, if you are uh, eligible for PR or you've got your PR or your refugee coming to Canada, we would invite you to go on our website fill out our application A. Um, submit it, you'll get a note thanking you for, for this submission and we will send you an email advising you that it's been received. So if you don't get that email, some, there's been a glitch, let us know, shoot us an email, whatever. But you should get an email saying it's been received once you submit it. And then ultimately it, you will get another email that will let you know whether indeed you are eligible for the program and if you are, what your next steps are. Next slide, please. So you've submitted your application. You've been, you've been advised that, yes, indeed, you're eligible. At that point, uh, if you could go back one slide, you, you jumped ahead there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm on top of this. So <laughs> yes, you're eligible. You get sent to Matthew. You see his picture there. You can see him up on the, on the uh, screen. Uh, he's one of the panelists. Matthew has an incredible background in the construction industry. He comes from Scotland originally. He holds several trades tickets as well as a master's. Uh, he's very well-rounded. He's been very involved in the construction industry for more years than I'm going to tell you because he won't want me to tell you how many years he's been doing this. Matthew will work with you initially to determine your place in the industry and to, he will also advise our reps your best route to employment in British Columbia. Now we will work with you if you're a professional we can help identify where you need to go to do your credential recognition. For example, you're an engineer, you're going to have to talk to the professional body in order to get your credentials recognized. Um, 
but but what we do is a step further. It's a little more practical. We will look at your experience and say, all right, you need to get your credentials recognized. But meanwhile, you could go to work in this company doing this work immediately when you arrive in BC. So there, there's more to this than credential recognition. This is more an actual assessment of your abil abilities and skills and background so that we can do practically help you get that first job when you arrive in BC. Next slide, please. No, we've jumped ahead again. Oh. Next slide should show our reps. Yes, there we go. That's one of our reps. Natalie, she actually hails from the UK. Most of our reps that work with us come from other countries or immigrants themselves, so they will be able to relate to you to understand the challenges that you have to face when you move to a new, a new country and, and try to assimilate into a new workplace. So, you know, this, this will be once Matthew's assessed you, we will assign a rep specifically to you who will work with you, whether it's through Skype or phone or emails. Figure out what you need, how we can best help you. We'll connect you with other immigrant serving agencies. If you need help with some English training, we'll help set you up with ESL. Um, we will identify supports. For, in some instances, there are programs here in BC that will assist you with tools and, and there, there are a variety. It's a, it's a very diverse and complicated um, uh, uh, tangle of organizations and, and the REPS is going to help you figure that out. And ultimately, our, our goal is to get you a job. So we will work with you before and after you arrive to make sure you get that job and you get on your way uh, into, the, into your new experience in British Columbia. Next step, please. Or next slide. Oh, that's the last slide. No, I think there was one more we missed. We seem to be doubling slide. Oh. No, no, forward, forward again. No, it seems to be there's no, another that... one in there somewhere. But you know what? It doesn't matter because um, no. maybe there isn't. Nope. I think I think that's it. I I, I was talking. And I like talking. I can't believe my time has come to an end. I want to keep talking. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's, that's great. Thank you, Abigail. We've been getting quite a few questions here. Okay. Uh, and and uh, I will start off with the questions. And to all of our audience, uh, my fingers weren't working today here. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, okay, so um, here we go. Here's my current career in Vietnam is accounting. Is there any chance for me to learn about construction and find a suitable job in the industry? So I'll go ahead and answer that. I think probably the best bet, so we don't get confused, is um, I will uh, direct uh, the question to either Kim or Matthew, or I'll answer it myself, uh, so we don't get too confused. So I think I'll start with that one. Uh, and Matthew, if you have anything to add when I'm done, please, please go ahead. Um, there is uh, absolutely opportunities within construction companies um, for uh, accountants. Now, um, understanding the construction industry, the biggest challenge will be, um, I, I mean, accounting in a construction company is not that different than accounting in any company, uh, unless you're actually out on sites and doing the estimating, but that's a completely different career choice. Uh, for, for accountants, um, you know, to your best, your best uh, uh, way to prepare is to make sure that the language is there. Um, they'll be. I, I should make it very clear in British Columbia, even though Canada is a bilingual country, um, pretty much everybody uh, only speaks English when you get to British Columbia. So English is is something that you'll absolutely need. Um, but there, but uh, the opportunity to put your skill sets to work um, will certainly be there. Matthew, do you have anything to add to that? Um, well, yeah. Um, the, something like accounting, as you just said, is very much like the trades. Um, an electrician can work in, or an, an accountant can work in construction, service, maintenance, um, you know, uh, whatever. So depend. That's one of the things that we do when we're assessing folks, is that we uh, assess you for fit into construction. 
if you're not a fit in construction, we're just not going to tell you to, you know, goodbye. We will give you suggestions um, for other options, but of course, our primary, our number one priority is construction and specifically uh, trades and so forth. Wonderful. Thank you. The next question comes from Ross. Ross is asking, is there a requirement for procurement rules? Is there a uh, requirement for what was that? Yeah. Sorry? Procurement. For procurement? Think, so procurement specialists, is that is that the yes. question? Um, oh. Absolutely. Um, so by procurement specialists, um, you know, are you talking about estimating quantity surveyors? Um, Matthew, who else would be involved? I mean, of course there are, right? Yep. Nothing happens until something gets built, and generally that requires a procurement process up front, whether it's public construction or private construction. So, yeah, absolutely, there there are openings there. Matthew, again, do you have anything to add? Yeah. Well, that uh, procurement, um, there are actually several areas of it, and there is actually several areas of it, um, and they can either be you can be a specialist in procurement or it can be part of a skill set if you're a project manager or as you just mentioned Abigail if you're an estimator then some estimators are very niche and um, you know the, the type of job that they do other ones are more expansive which includes um, you know having to not just a uh, contact um, uh, suppliers but actually contact and negotiate with manufacturers uh, so to procure whatever it is that's, uh, that's necessary in the way of resources, which includes workers, which includes materials, which includes funding. So it depends on the type of procurement background you have and the type of project that there is here for you to um, a work as a, a procurement professional. W wonderful. Thank you, Matthew. Next question is uh, asking again about uh, sectors. Is our are architecture and engineering work regulated work in BC? Yeah. And uh, can I use that in the BC Construction Association? Sure. Um, absolutely regulated. Um, you, in order to practice as an architect or an engineer, depending, you know, civil, uh, mechanical, electrical, any kind of engineering, you would need to get your credentials recognized through the professional body. Uh, there's the uh, architect. Architectural Institute of BC oversees architects and uh, APEG BC, so the Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists of BC, uh, would be the professional body that, that oversees uh, engineers. Um, and that's a process uh, that we can direct, we can help direct you to these bodies, and it'll take time. It's not a quick, it's not a quick process, um, but you can go to work in British Columbia. Um, and I'll let Matthew talk about that, but you can definitely go to work prior to getting your credentials. You just go to work as a, uh, a fully-fledged engineer or architect. Matthew? Yeah, no, that's absolutely right, Abigail. Um, now, first of all, as, as, as whoever is asking the question or if it's the engineers or the architects that are listening, obviously you know that there are many fields of engineering, many fields of architecture. Um, and so it depends. So the key for you when you're making contact with us regarding a particular type of job is to be clear on your resume about your work history and the type of architect or the type of engineer. For example, let's take one area of engineering civil. There's about 16 or 17, probably more, disciplines in the area of civil alone, there's mechanical, there's electrical, there's, um, there's, so make sure that we know A, what you were originally trained in, B, what you are still experienced in, and everything in between, give us as much details as possible, the same with being an architect. Um, architects, for example, in Europe, Europe is has got billions of dollars worth of heritage buildings that the architects work on simply to maintain and, and to, you know, to keep you know, from falling apart. Whereas here, we're a younger country, we still have some older buildings, but a lot of the, the buildings that are being built here are primarily new 
and, and so therefore that's a different type of architecture from heritage type of architecture, etc., etc. So give us details, ask questions, so that we know what we need to do in order to understand you to then go and approach to go and approach employers on your behalf. Thank you, Matthew. Well, here's a fellow that's giving us some details. To jump in and add something here. Um, for engineers uh, uh, specifically, um, it, there are statistics out there that show a large number of uh, engineers to Canada, immigrant engineers to Canada, don't actually uh, work in their profession as an engineer. There are several, like Abigail mentioned, there are several professions where you can work in an engineering company, you just won't be able to sign off on those documents. A lot of them go in for project management. So there are, there are, there are several alternatives as well what we call alternative careers. So keep your, keep, keep your mind open to all of that and do your research. Research is the most important for you to do. And this is Ahmed and he's a civil engineer and he's currently working as a senior quantity surveyor. He recently obtained his uh, Bachelor of Science degree in, uh, or a BS degree, BSc degree in commercial management. Uh, He'd like to know how he, uh, if that type of background, uh, would make him suitable for a job in the BC construction industry. Uh, and again, it's back to you know what sort of engineering equivalency as is is required. Okay, Matthew, I'm going to hand that one right over to you. Okay. Well, the answer is a uh, yes. There is an um, employment opportunity, but. Again, it depends on what your recent uh, or most recent work experience is, whether it's been industrial, whether it's been commercial, residential, institutional, um, whether you've been working with an employer that specializes in something or generally, or a general contract, and whether you've been um, a consultant. Um, so again, um, you, we need to under, quantity surveyors, ab absolutely the, the, there's employment there. However, in British Columbia, one of the things that you will find is that professional folks, that although a lot of them come from countries where they were in high demand, here in British Columbia there is still opportunity, there is still demand, but it's not as critical a demand as what it is for say trades. So what we have to do if you, if you're going to if you if you want to fit in here sooner than later, the very couple of things that you have to do is you must be flexible and adaptable to take a job to eventually get a job because there are lots and lots of professionals arrive here daily from all over the world engineers, doctors, lawyers, administrators, managers, project managers, they're all taking courses like you just done where you took your uh, your management course and so everybody wants to be a manager but for every particular project or, or, or employer, employment opportunity there is, there's only one or two or three managers for every eight, nine, ten or twenty employees so be prepared to, to adapt and so we'll we'll advise you on that. We'll look at your resume. We'll we'll tell you what the market is, and then one of our regional employment placement specialists, after we have uh, determined what your fit may be here, we will then advise you the type of employers that are hiring folks like you, as well as letting you know whether you can be hired as a fully fledged engineer or manager, or or whether you need to go through a process of upgrading, credentialing, and um, so that you can be legal in BEC, but in the meantime, still work in an indirect fa uh, manner for an employer, or a direct manner, depending on whether that employer's got other engineers who can sign off on the work that you do. That's, that, thank, thank, thank you, Matt, Matthew. Um, this is an interesting background that's looking for some advice. Um, it's, uh, Kingsley has an HR background, and was wondering if, and, and is coming to Canada in May, is wondering if, you know, someone with an HR background could pursue a career in the construction industry in BC. Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, as I've already spoken of, our, our industry is a little bit lacking in HR professionals. Um, a lot of smaller companies, a lot of challenges. 
Um, so, you know, HR folk, again, um, your best bet if you're an HR specialist is to focus in on larger companies who will have a department, an HR department, um, but there are also associated services such as ours uh, that need HR professionals to help the industry. So you have to broaden, broaden your mind, as Manley says, or Manley, sorry, um, Matthew says, uh, and consider uh, different options. And we can help you with that because we know the lay of the land. Um, one of the most uh, important things you can do uh, is to have the right kind of resume. And, and at some point, if we have time, I'm going to get Matthew to, to speak a little bit about what that looks like. Because having the right resume that really focuses in, in on your experience as opposed to your education uh, is a critical element to us helping you get that first job. Uh, if I may just add one point about the HR. Um, it's interesting that you ask that question because, and, and Abigail is absolutely correct about, is there a demand for HR in BC? Of course there is, it, and in, in construction. Now, my oldest daughter right now graduates in two months' time from a, an HR program, and um, uh, she's actually right now, uh, she has a choice uh, of employment opportunities. Now, I will add to that, um, and, and I say this with... Um, with, well, I, I guess with care, um, she is a very natural communicator, organizer, um, she's got a very um, a good sense of, of what constitutes um, fit and so forth, and if I may say so, it's probably better than me, um, but is there opportunity? Absolutely. Wonderful, thank you. Next question comes from Naomi, and she has got some, uh, her background is, uh, here we go. Sorry, the question just. Um, oh, sorry, her question just skipped. Well, let me get to it one moment. She's got commercial real estate management experience and is wondering, you know, if that there are transferable skills there into the construction industry. Yeah, you bet there are. Um, you bet. <laughs> Again, Matthew, go ahead. Could you all please apply on our website as soon as possible? <laughs> See that that's one of the important things that um, that when it comes to this type of um, a program that we have, it's it's not just a question of a question of us being a, owned and operated by employers, which is primarily important, uh, you know, for employment. Um, uh, it's not just that we've got these programs uh, that provide these services, including the assessment, um, but it, it it's also as uh, understanding how to transfer someone's uh, skills uh, from what might not appear to be a fit in construction or a given industry, uh, whatever that industry or sector may be. And so that's also one of the things that we do as a collective. Our team, are, uh, we've got a real uh, nice background of um, experience, education and, and, and so forth. So, as Abigail said, and I, I tend to talk on a lot longer than that, but the simple answer is yes, so absolutely send us your resume. Wonderful. And I, before I go to the next questions, I just want to remind people that you the, the, the British Columbia Construction Association website is right now up on our screen. You can do more research by visiting their website. I want to remind everyone who's in attendance that you're going to be receiving a recorded version of this webinar, and we will also be providing some updates uh, to you through our newsletters with some appropriate links to the uh, most important areas of, of the uh, BCCA website. So uh, please uh, just feel confident that there's going to be some follow-up information to this, and you're going to be guided in the right direction. Uh, now we have someone, I think, with some really transferable skills. I'm a civil engineer having experience in design of infrastructure utilities. I'm planning to arrive in Canada permanently by June 2016. Is there anything I can do uh, prior to arrival to expedite my job prospects? Well, hello. Yes. <laughs> Sign up to our program. This is a pre-arrival program. so. Um, we'll start working with you tomorrow once once your eligibility's been determined. 
Um, and you know what does that mean? That means you have real people. We're real people that that you can ask questions. We can we can guide you in the right direction. We will look at your background and experience. We will identify employers that you can connect with. Um, that's what we're here to do. We're here to help people who are coming to Canada find their place and integrate into the British Columbia workforce. So please get in touch with us. Costs you nothing. And uh, we want to help you. We, we are real people. And, and on that point, I also want to be clear that, yes, our website's there. We encourage you to, to fill out the application. But you can also shoot us an email. You'll see us all there on the website. Please feel free to, if you have a question or you want more clarification or you're not sure about something, shoot us an email. We'll, we'll email you right back. Now, do you have anything to add to that question? Yeah, uh, the fact that you are a, a designer, um, um, what I would be interested in seeing on your resume is the type of uh, design software processes and projects that you've worked on today, um, because um, you know you may uh, you know access employment sooner than later as a designer, but if you don't, then it's obvious that uh, with your um, with your drafting skills and so forth, that an employer may hire you on in that capacity, um, just to see how you know how good you are, and you, once you're on the job, you prove yourself, and then you grow rapidly, and and so on and so forth. So there's a number of things that we can do. So get that resume to us, fill out the application to be to, for intake to the program, and let's see what we can do to help you. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Abigail Matthew uh, Kingsley. Just wanted to thank you both for your. Uh, Wonderful answer, your wonderful explanation, and he greatly appreciates uh, your 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 information. We like so, you already, uh, Kingsley. <laughs> uh, the next question comes from uh, uh, from Walid, and the question, um, you know, now are there other choices other than BC uh, for uh, construction jobs? <laughs> okay, well. Um, sure, good luck with that. Um, no, I'm kidding. Yes, I mean, there are opportunities across Canada. We are focused on British Columbia, and while we're happy to talk to you about the construction industry across Canada, we have connections. Uh, our umbrella organization is the Canadian Construction Association focused in Ottawa, Ontario, um, but we have sister organizations across Canada. Um, they're not as operational as we are, but we're certainly happy to provide you with information. Um, when it comes to actually connecting with a job, however, that is happening in British Columbia. And another point I'd like to make, um, so those of you who have a background in construction or are coming to Canada, keep in mind if you're bringing a spouse or you've got adult children coming with you, um, there's lots of opportunity uh, for, uh, again, admin help in offices, labor positions. Um, don't don't uh, count them out because we might be able to help them as well. That, that, that's wonderful, Abigail. Thank you very much for that extra added information. Now, I know that you wanted to take a few minutes to talk about, I believe, the application process. So we'll, we'll uh, turn it back over to you. You can, uh, you can talk a little bit more about that. And uh, while we're waiting for some more questions to come on in. So what I would really appreciate is a, a few minutes for Matthew to talk about the resume process because uh, we can't emphasize strongly enough how important uh, a piece that is when we're connecting you with an employer. So Matthew, I'm going to, you know, he's an expert in this area, so over to you. Okay, thank you, Abigail. Um, when it comes to resumes, um, really, uh, focus is the key word. Um, focus on the particular job objective um, that you're looking to apply for. And so the resume um, a template that we use, um, and I've been using it now for 20 years, and I, I've never had one complaint from any employer, and the reason being because it's designed to be employer friendly, is a very simple five-step process. Um, step one, and, and you can look on our website and you'll see a little bit of a video with, with me waffling away about the resume, but it's a basic five-step process. You know, number step one, you know, your name and address, blah, blah, blah. Step two on the resume, 
a clear job objective, not a, a rolling um, statement about you know uh, how eager you are to become part of the team, blah 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 blah. No, no, no. A very clear job objective, as would typically appear on the website of an employer looking to fill a position, whatever that job objective may be. Step three, and this is the real important part of any resume, in particular this one, and I'll leave that one till the till the end here. Step four is simply the facts about your work history and your current or most recent job, and the, the, your position there, uh, your start-stop years, and then give us, depending on how many years you work there, give us a list of job duties. Now, a lot of people get confused about job duties, and job duties are very simple to explain. Job duties are what you, me, all of us, get paid for and do in a successful manner to earn the right to stay employed or stay in a contract with somebody that's paying us money. So give us a clear list of the job duties that you do in that particular job, in each job, and go back about 10 years, but absolutely no more than 15 years. As a matter of fact, 10 years is usually enough. Uh, step five, the last step, your education. Now, whatever your education is, throw all of it in there. I'll tell you what to take out once you send it to me, but include everything, don't leave anything out that, oh, I used to do this, but it's not related, or I had that, it's not related, put everything in. Now, let me go back to step three, what I call technical skills. In other words, the skills that you are capable of bringing to the job to use to perform your job duties on the jobs on day one of hire. Do not ask an employer to be patient with you, to uh, allow you a few weeks to get trained so that you can learn things on the job. Do not use words like that, that all the employer sees when the employer reads them is that you're going to be spending the employer's money, not earning the employer money or making a profit for the employer. So step one, your, your information, name and address, step two, clear object, job objective, step three, a list of technical skills, four, five, six, or seven, and no, a technical skill is not hardworking, dependable, team player, can work on my own, etc., etc. Those are soft and um, people skills, which are important, but if you can't fit in by now when you're applying for a job with your personality, then don't put that on the, the, the resume. Put your technical skills like you've got um, a experience in certain types of design software and you've, you're a capable electrician that can work on Alan Bradley controls and Siemens controls. You're a mill rate uh, that, can, that, that can program, uh, program machinery and so forth. That's a technical skill. Step four, your work history. Step five, um, your education. That includes your certificates, um, your uh, diplomas, your degrees, and any courses at all that are considered relevant and important to the job objective, which everything on that resume revolves uh, round about. That's it. Oh. <laughs> well uh, done, and <laughs> that is wonderful, Matthew. Thank you very much. Now, I think as well, we've included some information around uh, around resume writing that came from BCCA within, and we included that information in our BCCA section. So, uh, and I'm sure that if you visit uh, if you visit their website, you'll be able to see a lot of what Matthew was just speaking about. But well, if, I may, if I may, if I may just add one thing, please. It's, a, it's an important distinction, and I'm sorry I didn't mention it. A resume is a resume. A CV is a CV. Now, quite frankly, a lot of professional folks, um, they they will give you a CV, and they'll start off with their education. Now, I'm going to make a very firm pitch for the resume style. Employers love that, whether you're applying for a professional position or a laboring position or anything in between, technologist or trades technician, apprentice, start off with keep your education 
for the end of the resume, go straight into the job objective, don't waste the employer's time, give the employer a chance to understand you sooner than later so that they can say, I'm interested in this woman or this man and I want to get in touch with them and, uh, and, and we'll help you with that. Uh, per, Matthew, I think we're, we're having a love-in with Kingsley. Kingsley has just wrote in with the information in this webinar, I love BC. <laughs> <laughs> so I also want to make another point. Um, we're talking here about the construction industry, but we're quite cognizant of the fact that we're talking to people who are coming to BC that maybe haven't spent a lot of time in BC, and if you have any questions about the province or the weather or the cost of living or you know all that kind of stuff, if you have some immigration questions, poor Kim here has been sitting on the panel, hasn't had any questions at all, please feel free to ask those as well. That's perfect. That's great to know, and, and, and in fact, we can talk about Kim's, Kim's role for, for future opportunities in some of the newsletters that we follow up with our, with our, uh, our uh, followers and those people who have subscribed to hear from you. So that actually uh, are all of the questions that David, we can can jump in here. Also, also, Prepare for Canada has got a lot of information under choosing a city under Vancouver. So there's a lot of information about Vancouver. Feel free to check out our website and get that information for you. Back to you, Dave. Uh, uh, ab absolutely. And uh, Pras is, uh, has uh, written a note just thanking us all for uh, such a well-organized and informational webinar. So you're most welcome. And thank you for all of you for, par uh, for, for participating today. And particularly, we would like to thank Abigail, Kim, and Matthew for such great information. I'm sure you've done a lot to uh, to encourage people to arrive in 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 BC. So, it's our pleasure. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, we would again like to remind everybody uh, that if you have further questions, as Abigail was saying, please don't uh, be shy about getting in touch with them. Don't be shy with getting in touch with us. For all of you who have opted in when you registered for this webinar, for all of you who opted in to hear directly from the British Columbia Construction Association, uh, we have forwarded your names on. For those of you who did not opt in to hear directly from BCCA, Please, you're going to have to go and contact them directly. We are not allowed to send your information on to them because you have not given us that permission. So if you can remember whether or not you've done that, please, uh, if you haven't uh, given us permission to pass your name on, please contact BCCA directly. With that being said, we look forward to seeing you again in upcoming webinars. We encourage you to get in touch with BCCA for this wonderful Integrating Newcomer program. And thank you very much, Abigail, Kim, and Matthew. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>